Foster the Third, where we discuss relevant topics that affect the culture with bold, independent commentary. Get ready to be inspired, enlightened, and encouraged. Welcome to the Voice Over Now podcast. Welcome back. Listen, I'm D. Foster Three, CEO of Wake Up Global Networks, and I want to encourage you right now to share to let somebody know that we are here. No, 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 no. Not to confirm your beliefs, but to stretch you beyond the bounds of what you already think and what you already believe. Listen, at the beginning, I wanna say thank you for your liking, your sharing, your following, and just being a part of this network, the Voice Over Now podcast, right here on WPBmedianetworks.com. Shout out to the owner, CEO, April J. Thank you so much for allowing us to host this show on your very, very fine platform. At the beginning, we just want to remind you, like you're in church, of some house announcements. Don't forget, every Sunday morning, the Voice of Hope Connection call, we just give you a few minutes, just one word that hopefully helps you make it through the week. That's right here on WPPmedianetworks.com, 7 a.m. And then 7.30, there's the Voice of Healing Community Prayer Call. Yes, it is growing. It is a community of people. You're welcome. Yes, you are. No matter what race, what denomination, what persuasion you are, we just come in and we dispense what's needed among so many of us, and that is a source of healing. So you are invited, and that information is at the bottom of the screen. Listen, I want to say, if you're listening live, you're on your way home, you're on the treadmill, <laughs> We got some energia for you as this is part two of the current and future state of the church. I know some of y'all left, I know, but I'm going to kind of heal you. I'm going to kind of bind up the brokenhearted today with some major, major solutions. But before we get into that today, I just want to say that we want to help you honor your Shiro for Mother's Day. You know, in a couple of weeks, we'll celebrate, I think, one of the greatest days that we can celebrate, and that of is of mothers or mother figures that have been influential in our life. Well, for the third year, or the fourth year, I don't know which one it is, but one of them years, Wake Up Global Networks has always uh, wanted to be a part of helping you honor your Shiro by giving them on your behalf a very special gift. In order to fill out just a short form of why you think your Shiro should be honored, go to our social media pages. That's Wake Up Global Media on Instagram, Wake Up Global Media, and on X W G N I N C, and on Facebook, Wake Up Global Networks, and just say why they should. It, it shouldn't be difficult. If they are your people, then right. Right? If they're your people, then you should be able to say in a few words why you think they are so special. Now, that can be a, a, a rough task because there's more than one, but pick one. Just pick one, and you could be drawn, your name could be drawn by uh, Wake Up Global Network staff to get this great, great surprise that we have for you. Again, Listen, let me say this, and I say it all the time. If you feel led, no, no, if you feel generous, we can use your financial support. It costs to do these, and it's a lot of work, and I don't get a check for it. But because I'm true to my mission and calling, we do it. But it's not free. So please, 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 I'm begging. Ain't that what we do? I mean, ain't that what some people do? I'm begging, but at least I'm letting you know I'm asking. I, I'm, I'm like the, the I, well, anyway, I, let me, <laughs> did, you, did you share this yet? Um, um, you can connect with our PayPal or our Zelle at W-A-K-E-U-P-P -P at UPP03, let me start again. W-A-K-E-U-P-P-03 at gmail.com. 
That's our PayPal, and that is our Zelle. That information will be at the bottom of the screen. And that's just if you feel generous enough to sow $5, $1, $20 to help us to undergird this, these endeavors that we have on Sundays and on Fridays. And uh, we want to increase it. We need more equipment, but uh, everything costs money as you as you know. All right, having got that out of the way, I want you to sit back and I want you to relax. I want you to get into a comfortable state. Oh, we wanna hear from you also at, um, you wanna write to us or we don't write anymore. If you wanna email us, you can do it at thevoiceovertheglobe at gmail.com. One word, thevoiceovertheglobe at gmail dot com. Now today is part two of the series, the current and future state of the church. Last week I dealt with what I thought, my personal opinion, as the current state. This week I want to talk about, as I do on all of these series, give some solutions, what it is we must do to move this into the future, right? So I want you to follow me because today is, you're gonna have to, I'm going back in history, but I always go back and those who've ever sat under my pastoral ministry know that my ministry is like an attorney building a case. I have a main point, but to convince you of the point by the time I get there, I've given you so much backdrop that you can't refute it, even if you try. So I'm gonna go back, all right? Um, let me see, where do I wanna start? So, okay, 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 okay. The computer, the computer, the computer. All right, so I wanna begin today by reading a quote from a very popular, and some of you might not be aware, but most have, either through school, because I first was introduced to this main character, not through church, but through my social studies class in college. And it was Martin Luther. No, no, not Martin Luther King. Every time we hear Martin Luther, we want to make it king, not Martin Luther King. We talked about him in January. <laughs> if you like being inspired, educated, and entertained, because you're going to get some entertainment, you're at the right place. If you're boring, it's real serious, and real, real, real religious, there's probably another YouTube channel for you. But in any way, anyway, share this for the above, not the below. Um, as we bring finality to this discussion, and next week is gonna be a very exciting, I have someone in the music and entertainment industry who was offered a contract through Warner, but they didn't accept it. And we're gonna talk about really what goes on. And I think that's relevant, even in light of what's going on with the P. Diddy issue and all of the entertainers and Cuban Jr. Uh, Gooding Jr. and all that, all that, all that. But that's next week. That's next week, right? That's next week. I want to bring to the finality this very, 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 very serious subject of where is the church going to go? Because I made no bones about it. In my opinion on last week, it's hanging on by a thin thread. And I gave you some reasons last week why I thought, just my opinion, my podcast, my plan. I thought that the church was hanging on by a thin thread. Today, I want to talk about my thoughts on where I believe we need to go in order for the church, not the system, to be the church. So 
I want to begin by reading a quote from Martin Luther, the church revolutionist. You know, the one, and this is what I learned about him in history, that nailed the 95 theses on the church door in Wittenberg, Germany. Just so you, if you don't know, a theologian, Martin Luther was a professor. He was a pastor. But I'm attracted to him because he was a church reformer. Luther began the Protestant Reformation, okay? With the publication of his 95 theses on October the 31st. There was no incident that he nailed them on October the 31st, 19 or 1570. Now we've gone through that cycle where all the planetary movements were then and we kind of, and that, that's a whole nother subject, but I feel like we're going through this kind of revolution and reform again, and it is necessary if this institution, which we call the church, is going to survive, which nobody knows yet. It depends on um, what we, first of all, it depends on whether we believe it needs or it's hanging on a thread. I'm sure most people think it's doing fine, okay? You And you are, you have a right to your opinion. I wanna quote something Luther said, and I quote. No, let me, before I quote, let me set the tone in case this is new, Luther is newly being introduced to you. What Luther was basically against was not the church because at that time he was a devout, committed Catholic. But what Luther was against is a lot of what I talked about on last week's podcast. And that was the propaganda, the propagandizing of the church. The concept, like, what do you mean? And I mentioned a lot of them in today's church last week. But in Luther's day, the concept that one could buy their, that one could hear this, buy their way, buy their way out of purgatory. They could buy forgiveness and the likes. The awakening that Martin Luther experienced because he, he had an awakening. He, all of a sudden he realized this is wrong and let us have our awakening. We, we are here to awaken. We are here to grow. I'm not trying to go religious on you on this podcast, but I got to give you some context so it can make sense. And that's what happened when you're given material that you're not mimicking from other uh, pot platforms or stealing people's material. You have to build your case. But when you got stolen goods on you, you just robotically repeat, just rephrase it a different way. And we know the difference. Oh, yes, we do. So he was not against the church. I want you to get it. I'm not against the church. The, the church Jesus came to establish. But what Luther and I and many that have awakened are against is the propagandizing of the church. And I talked about that last week. And I'm not going to go back into that because that's not the point this week. Um. So he awakened and he experienced and moved in a time of history called the Great Reformation. I think that's what the church needs, and I'm gonna talk about what it looks like. If we're gonna the great, we need a great, not a revival, not a conference done over. We know what that is. <laughs> I'm gonna try to be good this week. I'm gonna try. I ain't making no promises. I'm good every week. I'm going to just try to take some of the sting out of how is that. Because most people, in the words of a few good men, they can't handle the truth. 
Um, so Luther wrote, he, he, he moved in a time of the awakening, this awakening that Martin Luther experienced to grow into what we know as a time called the Great Reformation. On October 31st, 1517, he wrote his bishop, Bishop Albrecht von Brandenburg. And he wrote it protesting against the sales, listen to this, because history repeats itself, of indulgences. It wasn't against the church, it was how the church was presenting it herself. He enclosed in his letter a copy of his dispute on the power and efficiency of indulgences, efficacy, excuse me, of indulgences, which came to be known as his 95 theses. Luther's response sealed his place in world history, because that's where I learned about Luther. But in my, I told you, in my social studies class, not in church. I never heard about Martin Luther in church. This is one of my favorite sayings, and I, now I quote Luther. When he was summoned by the council, because you know they always summon you, like they did Bishop Colton Pearson, when they don't agree with what you're saying, and you're not reading the script. They summoned Jesus, the Pharisees. We hear you say you're the son of God. They never come one by one. It's always a council. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, send it to your favorite council. Um, and they said, what is your response to this extreme act that you have done by nailing these 95 theses that you don't agree with how we're doing things? Or, oh, 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 <laughs> you don't agree how we do with how we're doing things around here? You should say, hell no. See what they do then. Because most people say, it's, no, no, it's not that I don't agree with. No, he nailed his to the dough. We're going to make sure you see him when you walk in the dough. He ain't going to have private meetings to talk about him. He going to nail him and he going to nail him on the dough. But I love his response. And this is where I take off this podcast. My conscious is captive to the word of God. I'm doing this out of conscious. I'm not doing this to be different. I'm not doing this to be seen. I'm not doing this to be popular. I'm not doing it to go down in history. He did not do it to go down in history. He did not do it to be famous. He says, my conscience is captive to the word of God. And to go against conscious, I understand what y'all counsel is saying. But to go against conscience is neither right nor safe. I love it. I can do no, no, he says, I therefore cannot, can't go against my conscience. I know what your scripts say. I know what your counsel say. I can't go against my conscience. I can't go against my awakening. I can't go against my awareness. I'm sorry that I woke up. I'm sorry that I started to think for myself. I'm sorry that I stopped believing the script. I'm sorry that I Googled your sermons and found out that half of the information wasn't even right. And I'm gonna get to that in a minute. I apologize, but I don't, but I don't. He says, I therefore cannot. And I will not recant. Oh, I love it. I love it. Give, us, give us some Martin Luther's. Here I stand. I can do no other, end quote. Ooh, ooh, wee. My man, I join his church tomorrow. I join his church tomorrow. That, that's what I'm talking about. It ain't, well, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I didn't mean to offend no, 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 my conscience, 
but conscious. And that's why people ain't even really feeling church because nobody speak with no conviction. Everybody, we don't be, y'all, don't become politically correct. Everything, don't, you know, when I said, where you stand on this? Well, what? You, you, you listen to certain people get interviewed. I don't even listen to the interview because I know they're not going to take a stand. They're going to toll the lines for their bank account. Mm -hmm. They're going to toll the lines for their money. I get it. I get it. Brought and paid for. I get it. So stick to the script. But then you can't expect the real ones to follow you because real, no real in scripties, no scripties. Like that. Real, no real in scripty, no scripty. All the real ones in the house. Give a thumbs up. All the script move. All the <laughs> Now, I started this. I started the show with this. Little history is because it sets the tone for two days conversation. And it may be a little uncomfortable, but I told you I'm not here to confirm your beliefs and to make you comfortable. I'm here to stretch you beyond your bounds so that we can grow and think for ourselves. I've told every church I've ever pastored, my job is not to tell you how to think. It's just to present the information to cause you to think for yourself. The reason I begin this, because this sets the tone. Because we're right back here again. But the difference is, ain't a lot of Martin Luther's, I believe Bishop Pearson attempted to be. But I don't think you can still be like entrenched, and I'll get to that, in the system. He was still kind of in the system a little bit. But yeah, that, that yeah. That's just my opinion, my opinion. And I have a right to my opinion and, and I stand on my opinion. I mean, you know, the day is over where they up there and you here. I don't care who you are, you know? Ain't no big eyes and little U's. We all God's children. We all God's. We are all one. With, we all right there with God, regardless of the title or not having a title. That stuff is gonna be over too. Share this. Last week I left off giving you my opinion in describing what I thought the current church, how the church was in decline. I gave you my opinion on how I thought the church was doing anything and everything, like getting your hair cut. Yeah, I'm, I'm still, I ain't, yeah. Porn, surf over the Bible, all that kind of stuff to survive, doing everything to survive. That's the survival, I don't give a survival. How I thought the church was becoming irrelevant. And I'll talk a little bit about that today too, because that's one of the reasons that I think it's all hanging on by a strand. And as I said last week, as always with these topics, I wanna give solutions at the end of the day or give what I feel will be solutions. That's why I begin with the story of Martin Luther, not King, because I think that time mirrors this time, just in a little different way because times are different. I believe the church, like Luther thought, must, must experience reform, hear this, and I think it can experience reform, but there's a qualification to it. And when you got gatekeepers and you got councils, it's gonna be difficult to get these next group of people to the forefront to bring reform that I'm about to mention. I think it can be reform, but by those who are outside the system that have nothing to protect. I don't believe a reformist can be a person who has everything to protect. I don't. I think the reformist has to be somebody who has nothing to lose. That's just my opinion. 
And I see all of these inside reformers, or no, they're not reformers, performers, attempting, and they use what, this is a reformation. There ain't no reformation. There ain't no, <laughs> these stuff we call, we call stuff stuff, just to be different. Reformation church, are you doing the same thing the Pentecostals are doing? How's that a reformation church? We don't even know what reformation is. And not slamming on if your church is named reformation. I'm just giving you an example. We call stuff stuff. No, no more church as usual. And we got that. And what you're saying is usual. Come on, people. Come on. Come on. Let's stop playing the games and get the church reformed. If it's going to survive. My first thing is, I don't think it, you got something to lose. You're not going to go out on the limb that is necessary. See, Martin Luther was excommunicated for his belief. And he was not trying to reform the kingdom. He was trying to reform, in his mind, a corrupt system. And he lost the, the council, voted him out. That's where you get the Lutheran church. You should study that one day. You should go. That's a, that's a very interesting story. It's a very interesting story. Church reform can happen. By those, number one, who don't have anything to protect. Right? But then the other piece is, I think the general theme of its reformation is, y'all, church got to tell the truth. I think the main reason why it is unsustainable the way it is, because it is embedded in theological biblical, political, social lies. Yeah, I said it. Embedded. Now, I'm going to hit three points where I believe the church would see a revolution if we even begin to recover from these lies. The first one is, number one, real simple, start telling the truth about how God sees men and women, really, in God's eyes. We, 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 we've been told a lot. I believe if you start telling, people will go and be attracted. But you know, wait before you say, oh, I do that. Do you? Okay. So you guys say, how do God see me? You. How do God see? Who are you in God's eyes? Well, I'm gonna let Jesus answer that. And this is why I know most people ain't going to tell this truth unless you outside the system and you ain't got nothing to protect. This is how I know. I bet you ain't gonna tell this truth. Who am I? When you start telling people who they really are, they start waking up. But then, if they wake up, they may not need me as much. Well, they don't need you, but in a different way. If they wake up, they may start to think for themselves, yeah, 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 yeah. But let's start off by really telling them and being honest who they are. Who are you? So, so you shouting back, well, who you think they are, D Foster three? Uh, no, 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 I'm not qualified to answer that without Jesus. Got to answer it first and I'll just say what Jesus said. Remember the bracelet, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus say? St. John 20, 34. Jesus answered them. Has it not been written in your law? I said, you are God. I bet you ain't gonna preach that. See, that's where reform starts. So I don't wanna hear reform with the same old lies. It ain't reform. You just talk in reform. They just talk in reform. Wait a minute, you got. You, yeah, you ain't, you ain't never heard that. You wait, wait. You've been church. Wait, 
wait a minute now. <laughs> you know how they say, wait a minute now. You never heard you were God. Oh, but I bet you heard you were a wretch. I bet you heard you were undone. I bet you heard you were nobody trying to tell everybody. And you want to go to a place that casts those kind of spell of words over you every week? No. That's why they don't come. Now, I'm trying to help you. I don't know at all. I just got my part. Oh, that's not enough for you? Tell them, let's, let's get rid of the lies in church. It ain't the devil's trying to, it's the lies. Lies are unsustainable, especially as we come into this age of authenticity. We're moving into an age where every lie is being exposed. And they're leaving the church because they're Googling the truth, some of the truth, and then they're following teachers that are awakening their spirits that don't have nothing to lose. See, I know you want to awaken, but it's going to cost you. So don't even, don't, don't protect you don't work hard for that. You're almost in retirement. Protect that. Second Peter 1 4. When you tell the people who they really are, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that we read that, that by these you may be partakers of the divine nature. God, divine. Divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Divine, they, I'm not just human, I am divine. That sounds like St. John 20, 34. You are God's, ooh, ooh, my shot, cool. Yeah, that, 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 that. But see, I, I can't thrive on that. I can't pro profit off of that. That's what Martin Luther said, I profit off of Sin consciousness, no good by your forgiveness. Give out of guilt. Sir, because that's the least you can do as low as you are. And I can talk like this because I ain't trying to get no members because I ain't got nowhere to take it. <laughs> See, a pastor talking like this, he would have ulterior motives. I can talk free. But I do have people I mentor and counsel. When you tell people, and I know it sounds like I'm preaching, but I'm not. I'm, this happens to be a spiritual subject. So this is a podcast. You know, we talk about everything. I told you, spiritual. If you're talking about it, we're talking about it. And people talk about why people ain't in church. So I talk about the stuff people talk about in private that they don't want to talk about in public. That's why I said, if you're talking about it, we're talking about it. We're just going to talk outwardly about it and bring the, the proof up in the booth, not just talking. When you tell people who they are, they won't act like who they ain't. That's the first thing. Tell, and I'm just hitting, these are just my beliefs, some of my beliefs. This is not the whole and caboodle, because there are other things. But these kind of things I was led to kind of, kind of share. If we get these straight, I think we'll see some kind of reformation. Second thing is, tell the truth of God in the Bible. Hmm? Yeah. Tell the truth about the Bible, its history, and what was omitted and why. You know, I have a spiritual class, and I share some of these in my spiritual class, not a church, spiritual class. And what I said was, and people were flabbergasted, it's proof. There were 300 renditions before the final text was submitted. And more texts remain out of the canon, the true text, like Thomas, like Enoch, like Mary, these are books, authentic. But why were they left out? Especially Thomas, one of the most powerful books that could have been put in because it's not a narrative. It's 
directly the words of Jesus. He said, well, how do you know? This, this is inspired word of God. I like what Bishop Pearson said. It's the inspired word of what man thought God was saying. Some of it. So when Google becomes smarter than those in front of us, I remember one time I was in Ohio teaching and I said a word that I had heard other people say. I, I, I say this often. And one of our young, young adults that I was always close to, our young people mentor, is like, Bishop, we don't, what does that word mean? We heard you say it, but we can't find it. And then I had to go back and realize it's not a real word. It's something that was birthed in theology that was passed down. That's what we are experiencing. Because the truth is being told now. People are waking up. We're going back into history and we're finding out the stuff we were told ain't exactly the way it's been told, but we ain't changing it. And people are saying, I don't have time for the fables. I don't have time for the faith. Now, and I think a part of that is generational because some people want to be comfortable. They, 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 some, some people are already done turn this out because I'm moving them out of their comfort zone. They've always believed the 66 books in the Bible. No, 66 books in the canon that the Catholic Church permitted to be in the canon. And they were running out of time and they said, we need to vote. What's going in? Because there was almost a war about to break out. All right. So let's don't put the books in that will empower them to know who they are. Put the books in that will deal with law and works for the most part. And that's what Martin Luther was saying. The just shall live by faith and not works. Tell the truth about the Bible and people will want to hear you, but not if you have something to protect. I don't think you will be able to do it, right? This is a truth challenge. Who is he to challenge me? I'm not challenging you. I'm just putting it out there. I'm just, I'm just giving my thoughts. You give your thoughts on Sunday, right? And it ain't always right, and we don't always agree, but you give it. That's your right. Your pulpit is your platform. This podcast is my platform. And finally, <laughs> did you share this yet? Oh, tell the truth about where the power of God lies or where God is. Let me do God up in heaven. Really. I didn't get empowered until I realized that he was in me. That's why we started with John 20, verse 10, the verse 34, you are God's. How can you be called God and nothing about you is divine? Christ in me. Wait a minute, that, I know, but I believe he's up there. Well, that's, that's your right. See, again, our belief in truth is two different things. And one thing I've learned in growing, truth doesn't have to be verified through the portal of others' ignorance. I think these are just some things that, in my opinion, and I'm open to have conversation about this, will start us having a real reformation. And I didn't even get into what a real reformation. See, just naming your church Reformation Church don't mean there's a real reformation going on. I didn't even get into what a real reformation is all about. 
when you see what Martin Luther set the pattern, Jesus set the pattern for a real, real, and I believe we are on the brink, I'm telling you, of real reformations that reformers, God is raising up reformers who are awakened, who are have nothing to protect, who are not paid and bought, paid for, not in between, well, you know, no, no, like, no, like Martin Luther said, I can't recant. I can't go against my conscience. Here I stand, and no other can do. And I prophesied it on this voice over there podcast that there will be a reformation. It won't necessarily be televised. It may be computerized, <laughs> YouTube eyes, you know, uh, your platform eyes. But there will be a reformation. Upon this rock, I build my church, not that church, my church in the gates of hell. Propaganda indulgences. We thought it was the devil. Propaganda indulgences will not prevail against God bless Bishop Colton Pearson in his efforts to plant the seed in this season. But it's left for the real called reformers to build upon and continue. So let me say this, whether the church survives, ain't based on how many members somebody got, ain't based on how big the church is, ain't based on the choir, ain't based on the music. It's based on reform, in my opinion. And if not, then there will be a reformation outside of that system. But I can tell you, and I promise you, there will be. If, if no other system that I talk about survives, this one will. Jesus promised it. But it won't survive the way it is, in my opinion. That's why I said, upon this rock, I, I build, I build my church. And in every century, in every generation, you have some people, not only one, you have people that God raises up with a Martin Luther spirit that are bold enough, free enough, and courageous enough to begin reformation and then to hand it, to hand it down. That's where we at, y'all. I, that's my conclusion on the state and future of the church. <laughs> Next week, we're going to talk the entertainment industry. This is what I love about the Wake Up, uh, excuse me, the, the Voice Over Net podcast. I love it. I love it. I love it. Because if you're talking about it, if it's affecting culture, we're talking about it. And we're not talking around it. That's what you understand about this. We're not talking around it. We're not talking in circles. We're not talking in gray areas. Nope. Um, we're talking about it. And we're giving commentary and opinion of about it. And so don't forget to join, share this, tell somebody next week. Um, it's going to be great, great, great. We want to hear from you. The voice over a globe at gmail.com. Don't forget, we still need your support to allow this platform to grow, to make sure that we undergird every effort to encourage you on Sundays. And our pr we need to even take our um, Voice of healing, the way we communicate to another level, right? We need to we need to computerize that, and we're gonna do all of that. We just need your help. If you find this platform valuable, then please, our giving mechanisms, the way you can give, is at the bottom of the screen. Wake Up Global Networks is a nonprofit, tax deductible organization. Until 
the next The Voice Over Now podcast. This is your host, D. Foster 3, saying, make sure you come back. Peace. Thank you for being a part of The VoiceOver. Please follow us on all of our social media platforms to stay connected to our upcoming shows and guests. Instagram at The VoiceOver Radio. Twitter at D Prophetic I. That's the letter D, Prophetic E-Y-E. If this show has enriched you in any way, please share The VoiceOver among your circle. Until next time, keep allowing your voice.